All right, everybody. Uh, my name's Lucas. I'm with the Carlo Precision Instrument, and this is kind of a follow-up video on um, a previous video that I recorded uh, called uh, "How to Tweak a Scene uh, Registration or Target Registration." Um, this is, if you anyone actually watched, this is the same kind of project that was done before. Um, in the previous project or video I only had this part registered. Uh, there were more scans that were added to it and this was all done in these clusters. Mm, you can see that the first cluster had a relatively nice already cleaned up uh, tension on the on the targets that's not more than about three hundredths of a foot and the second cluster is uh, no worse. It's actually a little bit better, two hundredths of a foot accuracy. Uh, on the worst uh, target. Now, when you merge these two together, target-based, I am intentionally um, disconnecting or unchecking the actual sensors because uh, on a large project like that, you may not need to have the inclinometer GPS and compass on, but we'll leave it on for now, just so that it shows you what it's doing and you see that there's actually unnecessary tension on a lot of these so let me see if we can actually fix this by unchecking these occasionally scene does this this is not uh, something to be really worried about see a little red light everything seems to be failing but if you look at the tensions nothing's really high so all you have to do is just hit apply again and you'll see that it kind of changes it to green. That's probably a little a, a, a glitch or a bug, maybe. But I've seen this happen occasionally. Uh, so these values really look good. Well, uh, numbers can lie. And that's where I urge everybody, even though all these values look good, uh, I typically create a couple of clipping boxes. And if you look at uh, where I usually put my clipping box, I did it along the whole project. And you can see that there's a couple of these clipping boxes that are offset by, I don't know, 15, 20 feet. And what you can do is, uh, let me do this. I bring up the one that I want to check. And I do have a viewpoint saved here so that I always match where I need to go look. But essentially, I'm looking at this slice from the angle that you saw the camera take me to. And if I put the camera right dead in between these, you can see that there's actually two surfaces. And by measuring mid in between them, I notice that the difference between them is over an inch. And that's not something that we're uh, happy with, that I would be happy with especially when you know elevations matter in this case so uh, how do you tweak this how do you get rid of it well apparently um, it's all about preparation so if you know that you are going to start and let me just make it visible if we know that we're starting we started scanning there and kept going we had a linear way of actually finishing our scans. It's always a good idea to continue scanning, and you can see, and finish scanning really close to where you started. Now, if you're going to do that, that's uh, pretty much an old survey uh, technique where you traverse, traverse around a project and then kind of lock it into the first scan. Um, you know, the, the the scanning over here was done with that in mind, but no targets were left and marked to actually lock in this very last scan, which is scan 28. Uh, let's highlight this guy with uh, the scan that's the most adjacent to it, which happens to be scan number two. So uh, at this point, uh, what you have to do is investigate we know that it's definitely a vertical issue that we uh, were seeing in the little slice so typically what I do if I cannot see um, targets that have been common from when we started let's say a couple of hours ago or maybe a day ago 
and to uh, a common target uh, when we actually finished is we have marked a plane and I marked this plane on this ductwork over here because it is flat and this ductwork I marked in both scans let's load up the last scan over here and what this does it helps bring it in and tie in or pull in uh, this data let's see oh there we go so we have this ductwork uh, right here mm, that is uh, loaded and uh, marked in the actual scans so i can use it to bring in my air on my elevation so let me do this i had it marked before so my apologies i'm just trying to keep this uh, video quick so if i enable it by having it in whereas before i didn't have uh, actually let's do this you see i use these settings and they there definitely was no plane in the mix now when i included it i update the scans leave all the settings the same hit ok we will have a tension on it because it would have pulled mm, scan 2 into scan 28 uh, but to a two hundredths of a foot uh, you know tension uh, result so if we now check our view and we do have to unload this so that the clipping box actually works so unload these scans now in order for me to actually see what's happened well look at the slice we'll bring up the actual view and you will notice that they're a lot 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 tighter they're still going to be a little bit of an error but that error is not as large as it was before and that's because of the fact that well we're trying to do error mitigation over here we can only do as much as we can this you will not be able to get all of it out but you'll be able to at least eliminate uh, the error from uh, being as visible as before so let me just do this again just for demonstration if we turn off the plane and hit apply and then we update our scans you'll see we have a large air right here when i include it hit ok and we update the scans i'll intentionally leave the camera here or the view and you'll see that it pulls it together so there's another way to troubleshoot uh, misaligned scans with natural references and uh, hope uh, this helped you out with a little bit of a how to and good luck and leave any comments or questions below. Thank you.